And going at your pace doesn't mean we're going to sit and go nowhere. Like I'm, I'm going to like move us forward, but at the pace that feels comfortable for you. So, you know, if there are, if there are blocks to moving us forward, then we're going to talk about those blocks and see, okay, what can we do to move these blocks out of the way so we can move forward? Because that's ultimately what you came here for is to move forward. My name is Lisa Headings and I am an expressive arts therapist in Portland, Oregon. My practice name is Express Your Path Creative Counseling and Workshops and I am an expressive arts therapist and registered associate therapist in Oregon. So I offer telehealth services to adults living within the state of Oregon and my uh, workshops that I do, I'm uh, just recently launched workshops and those are actually available to individuals wherever you can access Zoom because those workshops are, they're arts-based workshops and they're, um, they're not considered therapy. So uh, as far as who I work with, uh, I work with adults and primarily the clients that I work with are struggling with anxiety and low self-esteem. I see a lot of uh, clients who are um, experiencing stress, um, overwhelm from their jobs, maybe feeling unfulfilled and feeling like just things don't fit in their lives and maybe they don't fit in their lives. Imagine this, this box that they should fit in to be the, the person that they're supposed to be or to um, have the life that they should have and it doesn't it doesn't work for them they've not been able to um, fit into that that very narrow mold and because of that discomfort they feel like something is wrong with them but what i like to do with clients is use creativity to one explore the blocks that people have um, as far as you know, what is causing discomfort for them, and it could be um, there could be some traumas involved. Uh, there could be just like a neuro um, a neurodiversity situation involved. It could just be that you're your own unique person and you aren't like everybody else, and to try to be like everybody else is not working for you. So I like to help people by using creativity to explore those issues and to imagine different ways to tap into our own in intuition, find out what works for us as individuals, for you as the client, as an individual, and empower you to tell your story in your unique way because that's what makes you special and that's what makes you great. For me, self-healing, I, I thought a lot about this question and I kind of see two, two um, main areas of self-healing. One is um, maybe focused around things like, um, things like wounds and you know, things that, that maybe most people would identify as, um, as uh, maybe I should say issues that someone might want to address. So um, thoughts and behaviors that are interfering with you moving forward in life or a trauma, um, uh, some sort of disorder, things of that nature. And then the other uh, aspect of self-healing he can be things that are more of like a personal growth kind of of area and uh, so just being curious about self and wanting to explore and learn more now no matter what um, self-healing is not about being broken to to me it's not about being broken it's just about taking a look at um, at your life as a whole and seeing 
what in your life needs a little bit of extra care and attention right now. So it may be an old psychological wound that, or, or new psychological wound that needs to heal, or it may be just be a part of yourself that is not feeling fulfilled right now, that you want to invest more time and energy to being able to realize that further. So growing up, I um, was very involved in all sorts of creative processes. I took dance lessons. Um, I always had uh, art tools at the ready. I was always painting and drawing and making little clay figurines and stuff. And um, oh, I would memorize poems to recite and just all, all sorts of things. And as a kid, I didn't realize it when I was a kid, but looking back, I can see that access to all of these different creative things, um, they allowed me the opportunity to, um, one, explore different parts of different like aspects of, of myself and to try on, try on new things so I can see what worked for me. Um, but also, I mean, growing up, we all have um, times that are kind of difficult because growing up is a little challenging sometimes. And um, the those creative outlets allowed me the space to be able to work through tough emotions and to make sense of things that didn't always make sense in, in my head and in my body. It ha allowed me the a greater vocabulary, if you will, to um, to kind of manage all of that. And then as I grew up and became an adult, um, I incidentally had originally thought about becoming an art therapist, but as luck would have it, the program that I had uh, looked into closed their doors like the my last semester of college and like before I would have gone into grad school. So I went on this whole long journey for several years of trying to find another path because I, I took that as a, well, okay, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. So I did, um, I did a few different jobs. And at some point a few years ago, I realized, one, I was feeling drained. Um, I was stressed out from my job. I was seeing my colleagues being stressed out around them. And so I started noticing all of that and feeling drawn to help with, with that. And I started thinking, oh gosh, I want more time for creativity. And it all started to point to, wait a minute, you're all, you're drawn to being a therapist. Started looking at programs and came across expressive arts therapy and expressive arts therapy is a modality that is that is not just focused on one type of creativity. It's got um, visual art and sound and movement and poetry and all of these different things in it and be able to um, bring all of these different tools to people. What I do to pr promote self-healing, um, it's really about learning to tune into your intuition and find out what your being needs in that moment. Like for instance, I've, I've got some instruments on the shelf behind me and I've got a, a drum and well, if you think of the drum as like a heartbeat and if you want, if you want to instill calm, it might be, um, like a playing a slow, steady beat on the drum to mimic like a, a, calm heartbeat or if you are wanting to like jazz yourself up you might you know um think about you know playing a, a faster rhythm to energize you in um you know as the same as some people like to go for a workout and and get their heart rate pumping up you know is with uh visual arts there might be um slow meditative um uh, processes that are just very focused and small and detailed or else 
I might just want to explode with color and, and throwing color on a page and just being very experimental and seeing what happens. So um, the way I work is a lot of people are kind of disconnected from their intuition. They, they feel um, like they're looking for somebody else to give them the right answers. I believe that the right answers are within you already and you just need to maybe some help finding out how to search for those answers and how to bring those answers up within you. So as with any therapy session, um, each, any type of therapy, um, the experience looks different for each person and a self-help a self-healing journey looks different for each person depending on what your needs are. But in general, um, when I meet with somebody, the first thing that I do is always to get an idea of what their goals are for um, their self-healing -he journey and you know what is it that they want to work on and what to try to help them create a picture of what they want life to look like and that could be you know a, a metaphorical picture or if they want to create a literal picture since we are talking about expressive arts they can create a a more literal picture then i feel like that um creating some sort of a picture both uh helps us create a sense of hope for you know what um what we're going to be doing because when when you have hope uh, for the future that helps to um, motivate people to keep working on what it is that they want to work on and also keep them engaged in what we're doing because we can always have that that picture in the mind of okay like when this some days are not going to go as smoothly as others and so when you when you're having an off day you want to be able to have something to look towards and say okay this is why i'm doing this this is why i'm going to push through because i know there's better days ahead and as far as uh like individual modalities that i might use again um we can have uh, visual art. So a lot of time with visual art, I might start a session with a some sort of guided visualization where I'm I'm not telling the client what to see, but I'm create helping them get to a point where they can connect with their imagination, and then asking them questions that bring some sort of an image to mind, and that image. For some people, um, could be something very detailed and like a like you know a detailed landscape with with lots of um, very specific imagery, or it could be a more metaphorical. It could start with maybe just a shape and a color or something. But what I always tell people is whatever comes to whatever comes is what's supposed to come at that point. So. If you start with a with a color, put that color on your page, and um, then react to whatever that is. So, if you see that one splash of color, and you say, "Oh, now I want to add this other splash, and this other splash, and this other splash," then that's fine. But if you see that one, and and you feel maybe you feel stuck, and maybe we'll try movement and and say, "Okay, how?" does that color like what what do you feel inside how does it make you want to move um you know is there a word that you that comes to mind when you look at that color um uh if you can imagine that color had a voice what would that color be saying there are all sorts of ways that we can explore it but the main thing is that whatever happens with one um one modality and move on to whatever modality feels feels like the natural progression for the next um the next phase of the session and so what expressive arts therapy does it it helps you bring focus into other parts of your brain and other parts like i always like to say that there's knowing and knowing and knowing in your gut so it it brings um, focus
focus into the different the different ways of knowing. So for me, the three words or concepts for self-healing, definitely self-compassion and patience and creativity. Self-compassion, I would say, is important because um, self-healing takes time and effort. And if you can show compassion to yourself and understand that the healing process does take time and effort and realize that you are trying your best um, on the journey. It helps to alleviate some frustration with um, those times when it's like, oh gosh, I, I need to have this done now. I should be farther along. All of those kinds of judgmental questions that, that a lot of us have told ourselves. Um, patience, um, again, like I just talked about, um, it taking a while. Um, so understanding that it does take a while for change to happen sometimes, but, um, when we're patient, when we practice patience, we can ride that wave a little bit easier and know that it'll just keep keep at it and know that if you keep at it, change will come. And uh, creativity. I've seen, I've witnessed firsthand how creativity can benefit your life and can be self-healing. I've seen um, programs in, uh, in schools and in communities where people who have uh, access to creativity, how it changes their life and so I'm a big proponent of uh, creativity being part of the self-healing process. You know, I think anybody that's watching this video can think of a time when they were frustrated. And if you're frustrated, you, you can say I'm frustrated or you can let out like a grunt or a pound on the desk or, or um, stomp your feet or something. Um, sometimes you don't, like, I'm frustrated, like, okay, I'm frustrated, but tell me more, like, what does that feel like? What's it doing in your body? What, you know, just all of us have access to be able to uh, say those different things. Just sometimes if we stick to just words, I don't know if sometimes we try to be, to edit ourselves to be polite and say the right things, but if we use uh, these other methods of communicating, then especially ones that we're not so familiar with, then we start to become less worried about what is right. And we start to become more um, concerned with not what is right, but what feels right, if that makes sense. So I work with adults in Oregon. Um, I'm all telehealth right now, so anybody throughout the state of Oregon can find me. And you can find me on my website at www.expressyourpath.com. I am also on Instagram and Facebook um, at Express Your Path. So people can find me in any one of those places and uh, reach out for a free consultation.